Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Gran Sole Minimum update. March 12th, Tuesday, 1 a.m. Mountain Time 2019. I know that's a lot to take in. So is the heavy snow coming through South Dakota, Nebraska, Wyoming, and Northern Colorado in the coming days. These days will determine who believes and who deceives. Keep calm. You've entered the no bullshit zone. And we're for real. And what we mean by that, space weather incoming, two CMEs side by side. Double boom time. Now they're saying it should have hit already. NASA and NOAA may get a blow -a. We're going to be watching this. You're looking at the WAS Enlil spiral and a screen that has completely gone blank. That's fine. Keep calm. It's boom time. Please put the shells in the shotgun. Fill up the clips. Get the chips and dips. I have no idea what this is. Ace real-time solar wind coming in right now. Let's see if we're getting hit. Here's the two-hour plot that is not showing up. I don't know what's happening. Maybe we need power. We're doing power right now. Power checkup. Ow! Are you wiggling? Get in your hole. I think someone's fiddling with the with the network. We, after all, we are in the matrix. So, if you've just arrived. Hold on to your seatbelts because this could be wacky. Could be like wacky tobacco. If I could just move it. Can I move this? Oh my God, it's movable. <sighs> it's all numbers. Could be binary. Trinary. Yeah, let's, can we get the two hour plot? They're blocking us. Something's happening here. Let's go right to spaceweathernews.com. Care of Ben Davidson to check out a solar wind and see if it's still operating. In the meantime, we'll be back. Cheyenne Weatherman warns of approaching winter storm danger. Danger, Will Rogers. Cheyenne-based meteorologist Don Day Jr. says an approaching major winter storm could pose serious dangers to winter travelers as well as livestock on farms and ranches in eastern Wyoming, northern Colorado, as well as the Nebraska Panhandle. Day is the founder and proprietor of Day Weather Inc. in Cheyenne. So that's a gratuitous plug for that guy. <laughs> as well as our shirts. Okay, it's all frozen up. It's just not going to happen. Tonight, ever. Grand Solar Minimum Much. <laughs> and that's a boom. Which is also not loaded. So here we are at spaceweathernews.com and we're looking for the ace solar wind to see if The CME impact is imminent. I expected it to hit by now. Okay, here we are live. We can see the BZ is getting quite uh, wacky here. So there's some high intensity movement up and down in the BZ. There's also been some shift in the phi angle. At one point it was near 180 and it's coming back down towards there. So seismic alert as the density increases, speed will increase behind it. Almost simultaneously it looks like. So if we are going to get hit, it's going to be now, moving forward, three to six hours. And if this is a major first impact, we would expect seismic results. So that means that we're waiting for a, an earthquake to be kicked off by a CME. It has been years since a CME has hit the earth. And the earth is probably waiting for boom time. It's been waiting. It's been like... It's, it's readjusting. It's just, it's ready to powerful late winter storm to impact. Heads up, Yellowstone. A powerful late winter storm will impact travel in Wyoming and surrounding states late Tuesday night through midday Thursday. That's quite some time. The Wyoming Department of Transportation has released a video detailing impacts. If you want to see it, click on that button. Oh, let's click on it. Let's do it. We've closed some things. Maybe it'll actually run. No one knows. It's two minutes and two seconds of, oh, look at the puppy. Look at that guy. 
Let's let that parse up and we'll move on. We'll come right back. State officials warn public to take incoming winter storms seriously. Man, this is in South Dakota. South Dakota state officials are warning citizens to take this storm Omer. Winter storm Omer storm predicted to hit the week seriously. The de- Not the other ones, just this one. Take this one seriously. Are you serious? The Department of Public Safety released a warning on Monday night urging people to be serious and make preparations now, including adjusting travel plans, preparing elderly neighbor, neighbors, pets, and livestock, and stocking up on supplies like food because no one has any food. And we'll get to Venezuela and show you what happens after just four days of no electricity. Just four days. A powerful late winter storm will bring high impacts to Wyoming and surrounding states Tuesday night through Wednesday, especially central, eastern, and southern Wyoming, western Nebraska, and western South Dakota, and portions of Colorado. Heavy snow, blowing and drifting snow to impact I-80, I-25, and adjacent roads and highways. Some impacts to Interstate 90 as well, but I-80 and I-25 will have the biggest impacts. Possible blizzard conditions are looking like a possibility Wednesday, Wednesday night through Thursday morning, as winds could be 50 to 60 miles an hour in some areas, causing a lot of blowing snow. We're expecting areas of snow, maybe starting as rain, to develop along the southern areas of Wyoming, along the I-80 corridor, late Tuesday night towards sunrise Wednesday morning. So these areas, by late Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, will begin to see some snow. Then during the course of the day Wednesday, this area here will see developing areas of snowfall. The snow in this highlighted area Wednesday morning into Wednesday afternoon will become heavy, especially along the I-25 corridor in this area here along the Nebraska-Wyoming border to the Colorado border through the Laramie Valley and the Shirley Basin areas. Now, during the course of late Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday night, some of this snow will spread up along the I-90 corridor here late Wednesday into Thursday morning. Overnight Wednesday into Thursday morning, this area here will be impacted by strong north winds that will cause considerable blowing and drifting snow and possible blizzard conditions. Portions of western Nebraska and western South Dakota will be impacted, as well as some areas of northern and northeastern areas of Colorado. So stay tuned for weather updates. Call Holy macaroni, that is insane. Smoke a bowling. That's crazy. That's crazy talk. It's so crazy I can't even get out of it. Let's not refresh that. Tons of stuff coming. And I hope you're not bumming and you're prepared. I hope you have three to six weeks of food minimum. Three years maximum. State officials warn public to take incoming winter storms seriously. Are you serious? I'm serious. Update. Potent winter storm headed for northern Colorado. We just saw the update. Look at this guy. He already started shoveling. Don't throw your back out while shoveling the snow. Yeah. A widespread winter storm is expected to wallop most of northern Colorado and drop up to eight inches of snow in Fort Collins. That's where my tractor's from. On Wednesday, potentially making travel very difficult. That's what eight inches will do. Make it difficult. Makes it. Blizzard warnings and winter storm watches issued for Denver Metro and much of Colorado. Oh my God. Thank God Lee Con isn't right now. But it is in May, third week. And there's only 21 VIP tickets left. For Monday night, areas of rain over southeast Colorado and areas of snow in the mountains. But all areas remain worn through the overnight. Lows in the 20s and 30s. For Tuesday, areas of rain and snow move through southern Colorado. Look at that low pressure system. That's going to be some heavy falling up there. Heads up, Nebraska. For Wednesday night, snowfall continues along with incredible wind speeds, blizzard conditions, gusts topping 60 miles per hour at times. Don't be surprised if blows over and collapses. Wind damage occurs on the plains due to wind gusts of 80 plus. And then there are the snow totals. That's just six hours ago. Shut up, Al. We're done with you. 
for Thursday, the system pulls out of Colorado after it's buried, things get crushed, and everyone is without food. Snowfall and wind will continue early, but do decrease through the day. The travel impact Thursday will be determined by road crews, and Rex Bear and I will be in Canyonlands filming some of the most incredible petroglyphs you have ever seen. Walking in for hours, doing an overnight, and Friday morning we will wake up in the middle of the cosmic catastrophe. It's happening. We're doing it. It's amazing. We got a driver. Whew. Oh my God. Are you... Where have you been? If you just started watching this channel, your mind is probably blown. You're like, what, what about global warming? But I, I thought that but I had the main, the mainstream media. They, they all, they told me that, and I, I was latest developments March thirteenth, fourteenth, twenty nineteen winter storm. Heads up. Just looking at the probabilities of heavy snow. Ho ho ho. In the southwest quarter of South Dakota, the probability of a foot or more is actually increasing, which is insane. Because we're just a week out from spring. Martin up to Murdo will get a foot or more of snowfall. I don't think I've ever seen such a thing. Pierre's risk of a foot has increased slightly. To 60%. Now this storm is being called a whopper. And it appears to be that will be the case. Did you buy bear mace? To spray it in the face of the system. Winter storm warning, Arizona. Are you kidding me? I didn't just find this on the interwebs. Mountains of Churichawa Mountains, Dragon Mule in Huacha, and Santa Rita Mountains, Catalina and Rincon, including the cities of Mount Graham, Mount Lemon, Summer Haven, Summer Leaven. Ha <laughs> ha! I would be. Winter storm warning remains in effect from 8 p.m. this evening to 8 p.m. Tuesday above 6,500 feet. Heavy snow, total accumulations 8 to 18 inches in the desert of the Churiqua Mountains. Dragon and Mule, Huatra, and the Santa Rita. Heads up. Are you kidding me? I doubt it. I live in a hole created by numbers. And I have pulled the plug out of the back of my head. I took, the, I took that pill. I did. It was red. It was the red pill. I took it. And it was delicious. It tasted a little like strawberry. And the powers that be giggle. Why? Because you wake up every morning... You go to work, you leave your families, you come home, or you don't, and you go to the bar and you drink heavily, and then you come home and you beat them all up. Yes, exactly what they were looking for. Good job. Yeah. But some of you wake up at one morning and you're like, wait a minute, what am I doing? Wow. What is this all for? Why don't I have any Bitcoin? How come I can only take two weeks of vacation? How come Diamond has a sawmill and lives in the woods? What the... And they're laughing at you. This is going to end ugly, folks. Here is a four-day power challenge in Venezuela. Four days without power. Venezuela has been in the grip of a crippling blackout for four days. That's it? Four days? We're talking four years on this channel. Coming soon. And the humanitarian situation is dire in four days. I believe by eight days you're going to see people getting eaten. It's, it's embarrassing. And this is a third world country, I hope close to it. These people should be slightly sustainable. The U.S. is way worse off than this. Can you imagine what would happen here? 
Much of the country has been plunged into darkness Thursday, reportedly after major problems coming from the country's primary hydroelectric power plant. Reeves said, It's not clear whether sabotage or the U.S. government has anything to do with it, but Diamond thinks that probably they are doing this on purpose. Yes! Of course they are. This is how you control the narrative. She probably doesn't need to eat anything for a week or so, as long as she has water. But think about the sick or infirm. They're dying in massive numbers. Once the electric cuts out, the hospitals go dead. Now, some of them have backup generators, but they don't have anything that we are imploring that you get. Wood gasifiers, maybe diesel, eight kilowatt generators to back up your whole house and maybe a 300-gallon diesel tank in the back. That will last for weeks and maybe set you up to provide for a switchover to solar or wood gasifier, something you can create to get more electric or maybe the power will come back on. Many of you have not even thought about the consequences of this SHTF situation because if it happens rapidly and you're not ready or you don't have the supplies, the know-how, the books, the knowledge, the connections, you are literally screwed because everyone else is going to be more desperate than you are. And then what? They're coming for what you have. Do you have guns? Do you know how to protect yourself? Have you hidden caches in the woods? If you have loved ones that their lives are determined by dialysis or oxygen or any other instant type of product that they need. Pharmaceuticals. Heads up. Find a way out. Find an alternative energy source. Do it now. We implore you. This will save your life. In four days, millions of people are in chaos and it will quickly unravel before our very eyes. And I believe the powers that be are doing this on purpose so we can witness our own future. So you know it's coming. Students seek answers after second roof collapses at MSU. Heads up, Montana State. Bozeman, the North Gym roof of Montana State University campus collapsed Saturday night, 7 p.m. And global warming alarmists and climate scientists not are asking questions. Hey, heads up. You've been lied to. The sun is dying. The magnetosphere is waning. The magnetic poles are flipping. The 100 kiloyear cycle is in effect, as well as the 400 year grand, super grand solar minimum cycle, as well as the 200 year grand solar. It's all coming together. And you can watch how massive ice shoves and nudges Ontario Lighthouse if it only would ever load. Soon we're going to get to the GFS model. Hey, there it is. While the lighthouse video loads, we will try to get control of this computer. <laughs> Damn it. I love being off grid in the middle of nowhere, struggling to bring you this information. <laughs> Heavy snow through March 22nd. We're looking at record flooding on the Mississippi, delayed planting in the major crop zones. And a mass of ice shoves and nudges Ontario Lighthouse. Sunday, March 10th, broken up late ice and strong winds make for a messy combination. Sunday's powerful winds have caused at least one ice shove against the shores of Lake Erie, where a Weather Network viewer snapped a video of one climbing up against the lighthouse at Leamington, Ontario. The winds courtesy of Colorado Low that rolled out through Ontario overnight, bringing rain to much of the south and province and snow to the north and east. As of Sunday afternoon, peak wind gusts have been greater than 80 kilometers per hour in some lakeside communities, with Environment Canada reporting 91 kilometer per hour gust at Long Point. Ice shoves, also known as ice tsunamis, occur when high unidirectional winds cause ice to break up over a body of water and then pile up along the shore. Al Gorzahor. And we will blow this up to prove to you that 8 trillion tons of ice can move an ice house <laughs> or a lighthouse. 
And it is boom time, kids. Holy marijuana noli. Do they make marijuana cannolis? Oh, that would be delicious. I love that cheese. <coughs> Winter Storm Omer, you're watching it pile up and then a secondary system will move, bringing snow to the higher elevations of the Ap southern Appalachians. Second system will add insult to injury up in New England. And then we have some interesting colors coming in with a northern Texas snowstorm after March, after spring in Texas. Holy spring. Snow in spring in Texas. Is, has the big one hit? There is an error. Wait for it. Boom! Nope, it hasn't. Something's happening on the west coast of... And look. What is this? What the... 3.1 in Alabama? Flomaton? Holy. I don't even want to know about that. That's the new Madrid up there. 2.6. And a 3.1 on the coastal plain? Are you insane? Either they let off a nuke underground or something is afoot. 5.1 Guam Village. 5.4 Indonesia. Indonesia. No tsunami warning. And the volcanoes are lighting up on the Aleutians. Tanaga. Are you kidding me? Worldwide Volcano News Update. If it loads, we will fall into the hole of the matrix. <sighs> Breathe deeply. We will make the sawmill. We will see the petroglyphs. We can do it all in three days. <laughs> Probably not. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Ducono Volcanic Ash. Continuous to 8,000 feet. Shivalush. Possible eruption. No one knows. But there is a big black cloud that moves north for 100 miles. So I bet you something is happening there. What just happened? Don't get on a 737 or a 373 or whatever that plane is. Don't get on a plane. Popoca de Petal, Bromo, Sabancaya. Boom time. 11,000 feet at Bromo. Who said, where is that? No one even knows where that is. Popo erupting to 20,000 feet. Holy, sh I should have got video of that. Sabancaya, continuous volcanic ash. And Sanguito, Fuego, Cariminch. Holy macaroni. Is it boom time? Oh my God. No, these are just normal. There is a slight moderate uptick, but these are moderate volcanic acts. Now, collectively, they are cooling the planet, but they're not a worry to you. We're looking for a VEI 6 plus 7 or 8, and then you can all stay up all night. I promise. We'll know when it's coming. Climate change will make a walk in the woods a much rarer pleasure. Now, this is how stupid this article is. CO2 rising is going to kill the forest. I wish I had graphs up. We are at all-time geological lows of CO2 on planet Earth. The average amount of CO2 on Earth for entire last half a billion years is around 1,800 parts per million. It has been as high as 3,000 parts per million, and we're worried about 450. I mean, it is the most insane fairy tale you have ever been fed. <laughs> and they laugh all the way to the trillion dollar bank of their underground bunkers. These pricks. <laughs> These fucking pricks, man. <laughs> and they want you to assimilate. They want you to be godless. They want you to have a barcode. They want you to everything you do. We know what you're doing. Precognition. Do not assimilate. I'm so glad it's coming soon. God, I can't wait for the X-39. That's what I'm waiting for. No end in sight to Venezuela's blackout, experts warn. Well, that means we're going to see some crazy shit in the coming days. Sunday was the fourth day since Venezuela's power system went down, plunging people into darkness, and no one has any idea what's happening in the poorest areas. 
I guarantee dogs are now being eaten. We're going to arrive at a moment when we're going to eat each other, said Zuli Gonzalez, 40, a resident of Caracas. This is on day four, folks. Day four, a quote from the public. We are going to arrive at a moment when we're going to eat each other, said Zuli Gonzalez, 40, a resident of Caracas. The blackout is the latest crisis to befall the country that is about to eat each other in four days. Four days. In a fresh blow to Monsanto, India cuts genetically modified cottonseed royalties. This is because farmers drink glyphosate and kill themselves. This company is the most evil multinational corporation ever conceived. And it is now called Bayer. And you buy their aspirin. Please get a willow tree or something else. Do not support that co corporation. Stop supporting multinational corporations. And the poisoning will end. Learn to grow your own food. Buy local. Geoengineering might not be as ludicrous if we just gave Earth the right amount. Just a little, just a tippy touch. We just need a little bit. Just a little. We just need a little bit. It'll be okay. Guys, it's going to be okay. It's happening. It's been happening for 50 years and it's going to continue to happen now in a bigger scale live. The CMAs are coming. They're coming. Three, six, 12 hours, hours of powers. We're waiting on it. We're falling into the hole. They're laughing at us. We continue to fall. They continue to laugh. They tax you. You can, and then you have to wake up early and then they're laughing and then you're sick and then you go and then you're homeless. Auroral evidence of upcoming mini or little ice age. Yeah, the ancients saw the electricity in the skies. And we're going to be talking about it extensively this weekend. Rex Bear and I in Canyonlands. Some of the oldest petroglyphs on earth. Stay tuned. And we will delve into deep electric universe topics as I parse up the next 497 tabs. They laugh as they block me. They block access. Autoplay is blocked. On and on. The jig is up. I have the moxie to stick with it. They cannot get to I use shungite, other herbal remedies, meditation, copious amounts of tetrahydrocannabinol. Believe me, you cannot wear me down. Okay, 29 minutes in and nothing is happening. Autoplay is blocked. Traces of giant 2,700-year-old solar storm detected in Greenland's ice. That's a badass panther. That's the one that took out that chick last night. Sheep of the day, evidence of an unusually strong solar storm hit Earth 660 BCE. Not only that, an extreme form of solar storm known as a solar proton event, Micronova, struck our planet 2,679 years ago. And why is all this information just being found out? <clears throat> I wonder why ancient organo mineral geopolymer in South American monuments. Did you ever hear of Puma Punku? Yeah, I'm sure you have. Those megalithic H blocks have been determined geologically to have been, yeah, a geopolymer. 
more advanced than any concrete humans use today. They have, well, I don't even want to get into it. It is so insane that this is not on the mainstream headline that ancient cultures had more advanced technology than we do today. This will never, ever, ever, ever be shared by the mainstream media. They are not allowed to tell you that ancient cultures at Pumapunku, prior to one of the major catastrophes that blew up the entire city, were using advanced geopolymer technology, proven through petrography and geologic thin section, mineralogy. There is nothing on earth that explains this other than what the conclusion of the paper is. It's crazy. 15th of April, 2019. This is, this is not even out yet for a month. That's insane. I just traveled into the future to blow your mind. Scientists warn we need to be better prepared for a powerful space weather event as study on Greenland's ice core finds signs of three super solar storms in the last 3,000 years. We just showed you some of that evidence. Oh my God. The Daily Mail is actually bringing us good information. Read the paper. Or you're a schmaper. It's not a shardicle. Capturing bacteria that eat and breathe electricity. Another paper coming out March 5th. Now, yeah, you don't you just get to eat the sun and breathe it. What the is going on? How does that peer reviewed? It's time to eat and breathe electricity, folks. Wake up and smell the paper. <laughs> Five million years of climate change from sediment cores. This is proxy data. You can clearly see here that three million years ago to about one million years ago, we had an obliquity cycle that was killing us. Ice age, no ice age, warm, hot, warm, hot, warm, hot. And then 100,000 years ago, or 1 million years ago, my bad, we changed into a 100,000 year mega cycle, totally obliterating, massive ice ages, and they're only getting bigger. And guess where we are? Yeah. The residence time of the southern ocean surface waters and the 100,000 year ice age cycle. They have proven that as Antarctica breaks up from underneath, from the geothermal vents, it actually cools the oceans and it's a wrap, kids. We're going to go into ice age like I predicted for the next 80,000 years. Yeah. I know it sucks. It takes a while, though. You'll be dead before it's that cold. <laughs> Trust me. <clears throat> Let's talk about some solutions. And Al Gore is not one of them. But geologists are accusing Apple of political bias in removing an app that countered global warming alarmism. Look at that. Get in your hole. Your turkey neck, you prick. Modern eco-village. If you don't have the money to make a ranch, if you don't have the time, get out of Dodge, sell your whole life savings, and move to a modern eco-village. Here are 10 eye-opening sustainable communities that have been developed around the world. I'm going to leave you links. You can find it at lonewolf.com. If you're a lone wolf and you're a poor prick or you just have a little bit which won't get you much, come here. Check out Eco Village at Ithaca, New York. My friend Paul Glover recently suffered a stroke in January, and my prayers go out to him. One of my best friends in Philly. <laughs> we made seed bombs together, man. He helped inspire the Eco Village at Ithaca, which was founded in 1991 in upstate New York. Eco Truly Park, Finca, Bella Vista. There are options. There are places to go. Damanhor, Crystal Waters, Auroraville. Check out modern eco villages. Ten amazing communities. <clears throat> For God's sake, just Google self sustaining communities that want people and hit enter. Learn how to do it. 
Stop being such a sheep. Cosmic reality, Shungite. Now I just received a huge order of specially mined Shungite from Russia for Lecon. We have over seven pounds, including organically milled powder for you, you to use as a supplement or put in your own products. One of the most unique opportunities is to purchase this pure Shungite from Russia through us at Lecon 2019. And how about Shungite beehives? How about Shungite C60, carbon 60, eliminating radiation from your body, eliminating toxins, glyphosate, and curing colony collapse disorder? Cosmic Reality Shungite Beehive Project is doing just that. Check it out. Fact, bees have been disappearing in record numbers since the proliferation of Wi-Fi as well as pesticides. But check out this experiment they're doing over here to save the bees and get some Shungite honey. Nature's medicine. Check it out. I never even heard of this. It's amazing. I'm going to be doing it myself. I'm going to feed my bees the way I do, and I'm going to throw some Shungite in there. Nothing to lose. Everything to gain. These pricks, though, they can suck it. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. If you're not planting food right now, you lose. Trust me. We love each and every one of you. Thank you to all the Patreons that give on a monthly basis to continue to make my ass every day and continue to give you the news you need to know. Check out our new channel, Magnetic Reversal News. And I'm about to take a two-day vacation with Rex Bear. We're about to go in the middle of nowhere, which I've been planning for four years to uncover the truth about the last catastrophe, the big one, the Micronova. We're going to cover it, Electric Universe style, Check out our YouTube page or our Facebook page, Plasma Geology, for a 